Kayla, please like and subscribe. I want to welcome everybody to the first edition of Candid Conversations. This is a new segment that we have out where you're going to see one to two to three minutes during the podcast, and then you're going to get to see the entire interview with my guest today, Hannah. Hannah, thank you for coming on. Hopefully you're having a good day. <laughs> I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for asking me to come. Yeah, we have a pretty good size time difference. We're about eight hours apart. And, and where, what country are you in right now, Hannah? I'm right now in Portugal. Okay, in Portugal. And off camera, you were apologizing to me a little bit about your English, but it's <laughs> awesome. I'm telling you, like I told you before, I can't speak any Portuguese. So the fact that you can speak English as well as you do, uh, it, top notch. So kudos <laughs> to you. I'm yeah. going to guess that you are a lot more intelligent person than I am. So I'm going to give you that credit up front. <laughs> thank you <laughs> but i think it's too much but okay <laughs> well i do appreciate you coming on and one of the reasons why i asked you to be our very first guest is because of some of the same connections that we have through different communities on x uh defi elitism right. g5 things like that but you and i have had some banger moments at the poker table Yes, we are. So, yeah. So I will, I'd like to start this conversation out talking a little bit of poker. Of so how did you learn to play poker? Um, I learned to watch Chris playing a lot. Okay. And um, I'm starting from there. It's like uh, almost 20 years of a little bit of poker and it's progressive every year a little bit. Yeah. So do you play outside of internet games? Do you play like at casinos? Um, I will try it. Uh, I will. I will. Uh, no, I played some uh, uh, APT when it's going in Portugal, but okay. it's not, uh, it's not being good for me. <laughs> okay. But I think I'm not really good player uh face to face i'm better online playing because i'm like very uh showing everything on my face I so you would so. you would agree there is a difference between playing online and playing in person uh, of course yeah it's very so much difference I, I know a lot of people that play online and then when they go to play in a real game they're like, I don't understand. Like, I, I couldn't do anything. Every time I tried to bluff or I tried to make a move, I would get called or the people would fold when I had the best hands. And I'm kind of like, yeah, there might be something to your poker face there because there's an old saying from a movie that says, if you can't figure out who the sucker is in the first 10 minutes, then you're the sucker. <laughs> and I think even though that's a little harsh, I think there's some truth there. So but you and I have battled uh, through different tournaments, and I saw that you just won a five-round tournament with G5. Yes. And did you get bragging rights in your own house, or how did that go down? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no? Did he give you some credit at least? Did, did he give of a little course. bit of praise? Okay. <laughs> of course. So do you have a strategy when it comes to poker? Do you just play or do you have different strategies or how's that work? I play almost every day a little bit on poker stars. Ah, okay. Yeah. So uh, it's it's different every day, but um, I want, I like to see and observe and sometimes uh, pay my uh, loser hand just to have sir. Uh, how, I don't know how it's worked just to have certainty or how it yeah so that you can kind of see how other people how, are playing what, to watch what hands do you have sometimes I know yes I want to I'm gonna lose this hand but I need to see if I'm right or not it's sometimes it's you, you. Are, <laughs> you are correct because I can't tell you how many times I've given chips away 
knowing I'm giving them away, but the information I can get from seeing what that person was holding is invaluable, especially yeah. in a tournament setting where he can't just get up and leave and take his winnings with him. You know, they've got to stick around and they got to do what they've got to do. Uh, I was playing in a tournament in Vegas not too long ago with uh, my co-host and there was a guy at the table that I knew I had a beat on him, but I had to find out in a cheaper hand to make sure. So I ended up giving like 3000 chips in this live tournament to this guy. But as soon as I saw his cards, I knew, and it took about 30 minutes before I knocked him out of the tournament. And he was yeah. so mad and it was a rebuy. So he came back and I knocked him out again. <laughs> and they went and rebought it and I knocked him out again. And he finally said, ah, you just got my number. And I was like, yeah, something like that. But those 3000 <laughs> chips turned into like uh, yeah, maybe a couple you, you hundred like, thousand like chips. Pay for a little bit of information and yes. in big tournaments, you need sometimes have this information for a long way to play. And I'm playing uh, sitting goals like with mm -hmm. three people. It's very short play, but uh, sometimes it's different. It's not like in a tournament. You need to be more aggressive. You need to play a little bit different because it's too short and you just have two opponents to, to play. Yeah. Yes. You, you need to choose your strategy. Uh, depends on game what you're playing. I think it also helps too with sit and goes. If, if anybody watching this has never played a sit and go before, it will help you. It will help teach you how to be more aggressive because yeah. if you're not, you will just, your stack will just get whittled away. Yeah. Cause there are a lot of people in big tournaments that do really, really well until it gets down. Say there's a thousand people. It gets down to like the last hundred and because they have no aggressive tendencies, then their stack just whittles away till it goes down to nothing. But sit yes. and goes one. I think it's a great place to win money. To yeah. you know, not a lot. It depends on what the buy-in is. But you know, you're not going to win normally thousands of dollars with a thirty-dollar buy-in or whatever. <laughs> but you can go double or triple your money and, and it's do practice. that two or three times. Yeah, it's you great. Yeah, like practice every every time. It's good. Yeah, you know, I, I heard somebody tell me the other day. It's like yeah, I don't understand poker. It's just gambling. It's all luck. And I said, well, if it's luck then how is it that the same people are the ones making the final table every tournament? You know, there yeah. is sometimes there's bad luck, right? Like we probably both have stories of horrendous bad beat hands. Oof. Do you have a favorite bad beat hand or a story that aces. you remember? Aces. Uh, it's always aces. It's always aces. <laughs> always. I will tell you that I had, I'll never forget this. I was in a tournament and it was a pretty big money tournament. And there was four people left. We're at the final table and I had the uh, chips chip lead and I had a really good beat on all the players. I don't, I'm not saying that I knew I was going to win, but I was in a really good position. Like I, I was pretty confident that I had a, a solid chance. I got Dell pocket aces and I was, I believe I was on the button and I just called because of the way the other guys were playing. And somebody else, the big blind just checked. And somebody else had called too, but they ended up folding at the at the at the flop because the big blind bet. And the flop was ace, jack, jack. And so I have a full boat, right? Yeah. And there's like four people left in this tournament. He bet I just called. The other guy folded. And so it's just heads up. Then he bet again on the turn, which the turn doesn't matter to me anymore. I'm just, I have aces full of jacks. I'm guessing he has a jack is my guess. Jacks, baby. <laughs> yeah. So he bet and I decided to call. And then on the river, another card came down and I don't maybe remember what it was, but it was a blank and he bet again and I re-raised him all in and he sat there for about three seconds and then he called and he called so fast that my yes. first thought was, there's no way you have pocket jacks. And he did. Yeah. And I was still in the tournament, but I was the low stack by thousands of chips. And then I think I ended up getting third because somebody else got knocked out. But it's always aces. It's always aces. I swear. So many times. Oh, my God. I have some little bit like uh, faces. 
some weeks I have problems with queens. Yeah. My queens is always beating, but aces, it's the worst. Yes. yes. But, At least with queens, you can make yourself fold, right? Like if a king yeah. or an ace comes down, then you're like, all they all they have to have is one of these cards, and so I can I can get out of that. But if you have aces and you flop an ace, it's really it's, hard to get out of that hand. Yeah, it's hard to fold. <laughs> yes. Hard. Yes. So, do you have a favorite starting hand then? Starting, um, not really. I like uh, like suited cards, like it's when it's uh, close, like like uh, suited connectors. Nine ten, yes, nine ten, uh, mm -hmm. ten eight. Uh, Mine, for whatever reason, did you ever play? Did you play internet poker when a site called Jet Set Poker was out? Did you ever hear of that site, that mm, website? Jet, Jet Set. Jet Set. No. It was kind of cartoonish, but. I want to. I was able to win a lot of money on that. And this would have been in the mid to late two thousands. I don't uh, know exactly what year. Here we play in full tilt. Okay, so that was going on there too. But if I got suited Jack Nine, I almost. I, I swear I don't know what the percentages really were, but I swear it was like a ninety percent win because it would get a flush or a straight or it would flop two jacks or I, I don't know. So my my favorite starting hand is Jack Nine for some reason. I have an in GG club. I have with Jack Three or Jack Four. I don't know why, but so many times, like when I have Jack Four or Jack Three, I have like instant in flop, instant full house, and sometimes it's not very good hand to play. <laughs> it's a bad hand, but like hmm. I will see like just a flop with this. Maybe <laughs> today it's the day. <laughs> yeah, maybe this is the one. I mean, how many times on on Club GG where we've been playing and you know with G5 that those are the hands that win? Or when you fold those hands, you would have flopped trips, or yeah. you know you would have flopped that boat, or you would have been four to the straight, or you know that site is a love hate relationship with me. Because I cannot tell you how many times on the river I get beat with a flush. Even when I'm trying to bet people out of the hand, because I know that fifth, that fifth diamond or whatever's coming, I can't get them to fold. And then there, there's that card. And I just know I'm beat, but I'm so bot committed that I have to say, I have to call. And then yeah. they flip over Jack three of diamonds or whatever it may be and, and beat me with that flush. So do you have, so we talked about bad beats. Right. And we both agree aces are kind of the, the cream of the crop there. Do you have a, a, a story of like the best hand you ever like the best winning hand? Maybe queen nine. Mm. Yeah. So how did that play out? It was I think it was straight in the flop and it was so well played. I like eliminating so two or three players and it was it was good <laughs> gotcha so those queen nines are those 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 hands where the straight's not so obvious i love but those it's possible yes so my story on that was it was heads up final table of a tournament i got dealt deuce five of diamonds okay and i'm looking at it thinking whatever but i was a big blind and he didn't raise me so i just checked the flop was uh, four, no, I'm sorry, three, four, six of diamonds. So I flopped the straight flush. And this guy bet, and I just called, the next card was an, like an unsuited ace. And he went all in. And I, I, obviously I instantly called. And he said, well, I can't be beat. And I was thinking, yeah, you can. And before we turn the cards over, we're having this conversation. I said, think about it. What is the two cards I could hold that you cannot beat? And he goes, deuce five of diamonds. And I just flipped them over. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody went nuts. He went completely silent. He That never even, because I could see even looking at the board how you would not ever picture that. Because, it. yeah, there's a flush out there. Um 
but, but I, it's, yes, I, I yeah, it, but it's, it's there's that gap where he's like in his brain, you can't beat me, and I know that no one can beat me because I've got. It's not like it was three, four, five of diamonds, and he could have had the six and seven, and yes. I had the ace deuce. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. it was it was one of those deals where it was a nice win, and it's one of those stories like I've always just if I ever opened a poker room, it would be called the five deuce of diamonds poker room just because of that. So, okay. Have you, you have, uh, go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. Did you have a Royal flush? Did you? I have only had one Royal flush in my entire life. And the <laughs> site I was playing on had a promotion going on that if you won the hand and got a Royal flush, which I mean, you would win, but sometimes I think it had to be like, all the way through five cards, all the way through the river. It wasn't like if you flopped it and then you bet somebody out or whatever, you had to go all the way through. But if you did, you got a t-shirt and I think like $5,000. And I did that. And you had to like tell them the promotion ended the day before that happened. Oh no. <laughs> now I will say there was quite a bit of money won with that hand. So I was still okay with it. But of yeah. course, the promotion ended the day before, but yeah, it's only happened once and it wasn't, I think that may have just been a cash game too. I'm not sure that, that was a tournament because I don't remember that catapulting me in the standings or anywhere like that. But have you ever considered playing poker professionally? Maybe when I'm retired. Okay. Yeah. But Maybe. you haven't, haven't done it yet? No, I don't have a time for it. Gotcha. I need for like you for play uh, for do something professional. It's like you need so many time to dedicate to this and our real life. It's not yet. It's good for it. Maybe when yeah. I'm retired. <laughs> well, I will tell you that I, I've played against you and, and I know that you could make money on it um, in the States. We can't play Internet poker for money. Uh, it they shut that down in 2006, 2005, somewhere in there. It's been a while, but at the time, that I think it was in December of that year too. Because in October and November of that year, I was this close to quitting my job and playing full time online because I was making two to three thousand dollars a week, and I was only doing it like three or four hours a day. And I yeah. thought, you know. I don't know if you do this or not, but I would have like multiple games going on on my screen at the same time. Yes. And so I can have a cash game here, a sit and go here, a big tournament there, which allows me to also be a little bit more patient because sometimes I'm like, this is dragging on. Let's go. You know? Yeah. It's good so, strategy sometimes. Yeah. I like to play like big tournament and, and have another uh, window with sitting goal because in sitting goal, you need a very quick, uh, Mm -hmm. for assassination and when you like i, I love playing deep uh, tournaments when me uh, too st starting with a lot of chips and i love this long uh, play but when it's uh you need some emotions you need some yes <laughs> movement and it's not happening there in the deep i have it in a sitting go <laughs> yeah, a lot of times. Time, so, yeah. A lot of times when I'll play in a in a big tournament with let's say a thousand people or something like that, I would have like a fifty cent or quarter fifty cent game going on just on the side, which I don't know, in that four or five hours that, that other tournament took, maybe I'd win twenty five dollars or you know, but it was keeping my mind sharp and keeping yes. me focused because I know a lot of good poker players out there that can't play in big tournaments because they just lose interest at some point. They're like, I don't, I don't care anymore. And then they do dumb things. And for whatever reason, I never seem to be the guy that wins their chips when they get to that point. But I'm like, what'd you do that for? You were like 13th out of 800 people. I just, I couldn't concentrate anymore on it. And I'm thinking, man, if you could have you, you were going to be in the money, you know, tournament wins. How many tournaments do you think that you have won? Just a guesstimate. I don't know. We talking hundreds? <laughs> we talking thousands? Like big tournaments? Or, uh, oh, or, put, oh. All, put all of them in that category. If it's all of them, it's more than hundreds. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. I assume so. Now, this is the first time that we've really ever like talked. I mean, we yes. have communicated on X from time to time. And like I said, we've battled playing poker. You were, we actually had a, was it a 10 week league that we played that you were in? Yep. Okay. So 10 weeks in a league. So we've played a lot of poker against each other. You know how you can just tell when somebody knows how to play poker and when somebody doesn't know how to play poker? I knew right away you knew how to play poker. I told some of my guys that you know, like Caleb was playing in that with us and Holly was playing with Greg. I was like, you better watch out for Hannah. I'm telling you, she <laughs> knows how to play cards. Now, I don't remember, Hannah. What, where did you finish in that tournament? Uh, was it second? When, yes, in the second. Okay. and Because I ended up winning it, but yes. I also won like the first four games, which put me in a huge – point standings lead yes, yes, and it yes. just kept going down like the last six weeks and I barely hung on. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was one of those games where you came back and you beat me and it really tightened things up in like week eight or week seven. I don't remember exactly what it was, but yeah, yeah, it was uh, actually, I have it right here. Yeah. Which really, and Titan, that was a double point week too. Ooh, yeah. Because so because of this, I, I had, not yeah. So, so we had, two weeks where the points were worth double. And on yeah. that week you beat me by like two places. And really I was thinking, I, here I was cruise control for four weeks. <laughs> I'm thinking it's all good. I'm, Cause we paid, I think the top three places and I'm thinking I'm going to end up fourth, you know, after all this stuff. Cause I don't know about you. I'm going to guess that you're not a trash talker, but <laughs> I try not, I try not to trash talk. Because it seems like every time I do, bad things happen. Yeah, I understand you. And I have some problems to play with you because I think a little bit uh, have um, similar strategy to playing. And for me, it's like I'm playing with me when I'm playing yeah. with you. It's so difficult. I, I am glad you said that because I didn't want it to sound weird. But that's, I felt the exact same way. Like, I felt like I was playing against myself. So yeah. there were times playing against you that I would have to change my strategy up a little bit. Because Me too. I'm, a, I'm a pretty, pretty, uh, I would not consider myself to be aggressive. But yeah. I will get into roles where I will be aggressive for four or five hands in a row. Part of that strategy is I'm hoping that people are going, oh, here's that stretch again. I'm going to bust him but then I actually have really good cards. But a lot of times, especially if I'm playing in person, I'm the guy that will sit back for 20, 30, unless I'm dealt monster hands, will sit back for 20 to 30 minutes until I go, okay, now I kind of figured out these two guys, I have a pretty good idea about that guy, and then kind of go that direction. So I could see you doing those same sort of things. And then when you would get aggressive, I'm like, is she changing up just like I am changing <laughs> up or is she about to stomp me? And so I, I can see that for sure. So how many, how many times a week do you think you play internet poker right now? I play every day. You do play every day. Okay. How many games? Sometimes it's just like two, three games, but uh, I need just a little bit of energy from poker every day. It can be just a little bit games, but not not long tournaments. If it's long tournaments, I'm trying to play every weekend. Okay. And it's uh, it's good prices uh, on Pakistan's, but uh, I'm almost playing every day. Yeah. So some of the like guaranteed tournaments on the weekends, or is that when the big guarantees yeah. are? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I used to do um, when I was playing before. Was You'd always get in those, say, I don't know, I think they were like fifty to hundred dollar buy-in tournaments, but the guarantees like on Saturdays might be ten thousand yeah. dollars. So even if you got like top thirty, you had a chance of making like five hundred dollars on a say sixty dollar buy-in. And I had a stretch there. They had one, I think it was on Tuesdays and Thursdays, ten thousand guaranteed. I won it like three out of like six weeks, which was a I want to say it was like $5,000 to win, but I could almost always like maybe once or twice did I not place. So I could always make, even if it was say a $6 buy-in and I, and for getting say 
40th, you got a hundred dollars. I could always win a little. And yeah. then you could sort of tell about halfway through, like, this isn't my night, you know, or, you know, yeah, like yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we say on, on club GG, it's like, Oh, that person's a club GG champion today. Like it's pick <laughs> that person to win. Like I don't have a chance, you know, but yeah, sometimes uh, it's happened. It like every hand that that person plays, it's unbeatable. Mm -hmm. It happens. I see this. <laughs> yes, because, and I think sometimes that's where that luck comes in, but that's also, there's a couple sites out there that have really good random card generators. Club GG is not my favorite card generator. It seems like I have never seen as many things happen in real life as what happens on that site. So sometimes I'm just like the heck with it. I, you know, it's like, I, I don't, like I'm not playing that game again, you know, or whatever it may be, but we, we play in a week or a monthly face to face game. It's just a cash game. We just play, have fun, but I probably don't play as much poker as you do anymore. It's just real life. Like you said, kind of gets in the way, but, Maybe we can go pro at the same time and we can battle on poker stars. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's like my dream playing poker. And then when I'm be a uh, very, very old uh, lady, like uh, go to play slot machines when these cars oh, uh, having races with Chris oh, and play some uh, slot machine and some maybe play some poker. <laughs> yes. And then go home and, and complain about how busy and tiring your day was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is the plan. <laughs> exactly. No, that is awesome. Have you been able to make friends playing poker on the internet sites? Mm. Like, do you get close to anybody that you play with? Not. I think this platform sits not really... Uh give you opportunity for this you can chat in the when you're playing but people not want to have conversation with you so not really yeah i found the exact same thing and i'm kind of that guy too like i'll see somebody says something to me even in a friendly game on, on g5 or whatever i won't see it for i don't know three minutes or whatever it may be because i'm looking at the cards or I'm doing something else on the other screen or because I've got to keep my mind firing. If I'm just staring at that game, eventually that's like, I'm not at my, at my peak performance, if that makes sense. So no, I'm with you. There's just been some people, there's certain activities kind of like when we play with friends and we're playing for NFTs and things like that, <laughs> where it's a little different, but when you're That's playing fun. for real money, it's different. It is different, especially in person. Like I know that there's people that try to have conversations with me at the table and I don't know if they're just being friendly or if they're trying to get a read on me. Yeah. So I don't know about you, but then I, I get real tight lipped and I don't say a whole lot. Holly was out in Vegas playing in the same tournament that I was in and she came, she got knocked out and came over and was on the rail watching our table. And she goes, why aren't you guys talking? Why aren't you guys laughing? We were having a ball over there. But what's funny is I think there was like three people from my table that made the final table where I don't know how many from her table had made it, but it was just, it was interesting how that worked. And then we got to the end. I don't know if you've ever been in this situation or not, but the last place person, there was four people left in the tournament. The last place person said, Hey, I know I'm in last place, but what if we just chop this up and yeah. then everybody wins? And I think at the time I was in the chip lead, but Caleb was also at the table with me. And I thought, yeah, let's just chip this up. And uh, everybody <laughs> went something. Plus we'd been there a really long time and all of our friends were already out just kind of yeah. like, Hey, we're bored, you know? And so we kind of, we kind of went that direction, but it was uh, it was a good time. I love playing in person, but it's like anything else. Some people take it way too serious. I don't know if you've ever have ever been in a tournament where you were stuck at a table where people were just like outright mean. And has that ever happened to you where you just got at a table where you didn't really yeah, like people you're sitting I, there? Probably? I don't have uh, so many experience to play like uh, in real life. Uh, okay. Face to face poker. Uh, but it's when we're playing, it's like almost it's uh, friends. It's 
difficult to have this yes. <laughs> attitude. But uh, I understand what you were talking about because uh, sometimes we watch uh, many plays. Uh, we have some players who we like to watch to play. So, yeah, I understand what you're saying. It's not happening to me, but uh, yeah. So do you have any favorite professional poker players? Uh, for now, I'm. I like this Ukrainian girl. I like how he played. She, she, uh, she, uh, she woman or poker too. She. I think she stay in the second place, but uh, I don't remember her name. <laughs> yeah, and I haven't kept up recently. Is do you have an all time favorite? I like Nigranu. Daniel Nigrano, yeah. I like uh, Phil Elmont, uh, some some players. From so, the <laughs> so then I would guess you will agree with this statement that there's something different about a Negranu, Daniel Negranu. That guy, I his like, reads, I like him very much. When he calls out other people's cards the way that he does, sometimes, sometimes I see it. Like I'm like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Other times I'm thinking, how do you even have a clue that that's what that guy has? And then it's almost like he's defeating them mentally because they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to get in a hand with this guy because he's going to know what I have. And it's a mental warfare thing with him. And he's unbelievable. Um, unbelievable. Yes. There's etiquette in poker, right? Like just folding out a turn can give somebody an out or a read or how many times has this happened to you? Maybe if you don't play live, but people are like, oh man, I shouldn't have folded. Well, you can't say that. <laughs> Anybody paying attention <laughs> knows it now. Yes, Maybe yes, odds yes, are I course. don't have that deuce now, you know? So yeah, of it's course. it's a little bit insane with the ethics. I think that's also the draw to internet poker, right? Because I can sit here and I can say whatever I want and nobody can hear me. Yeah, You know, I can be in my pajamas, you know, cussing whoever it may be because of whatever and it doesn't matter anymore right because exactly <laughs> you can't hear me you don't see any of that stuff and i could be super aggressive while i'm chewing my nails you know yeah there's chris sneaking in the top <laughs> corner <at> you. <laughs> <laughs> and but it's you can't do that in in real poker you know i mean a lot of times my shoulders will hurt because i'm sitting in the same position for like three hours <laughs> just yes. waiting for the clock to get to where we can stand up and stretch and things like that. So yes, and when you're playing online, you can go to the bedroom with your phone and playing in your bedroom. So <laughs> that's exactly right. I mean, I can't tell you how many poker tournaments I've played against you on my patio on my phone. You yeah. know, I got my feet. I'm kicked back. I'm petting the dog. Uh, I, you know, I got my feet up and have a glass of iced tea or what. I mean, I am vegged out. And just sitting there playing cards and with yeah. my wife going, how long is this game going to last? <laughs> and then I always have to say, i got to beat Hannah. <laughs> i got to get her knocked out. Did you have some uh, favorite poker movie? Ah, so favorite poker movies. What's your yeah. favorite poker movie? I don't remember the name, but this one with uh, Tom Cruise. Uh, it's so old. Oh, is it The Color Green. of Money? Yes, Call of Mine. Yes, that is a really, I, really good one. I saw this film when I'm very, very young, so uh, I love that one. And uh, the other one, Rounders. Rounders, that's mine. Rounders. That is my favorite. I love that movie. And, it, you know, it, it pulled real life into it, too. It pulled in, um, oh, no, I can't remember his name, the guy that won the World Series of Poker. Uh, um, wow, I drew a blank. But it shows those sort of things, and it kind of shows. I mean, it's got a great story too, right? It's not just about poker. Yeah. And of I'll tell you, rumor has it that they're going to come out with a sequel in the next few years. Ooh. So I'd be very interested to see what that looks like because I really, really enjoyed that movie a lot. Yeah. And honestly, unless I'm just forgetting about one, I think that pretty much has to be your top two. Unless, yeah, probably. There's, unless there's just this obvious one that I'll be kind of mad at myself tomorrow because I forgot about. But I, I think that those are, they've got to be pretty much everybody's top two. They're, they're great yes. movies. And if anybody hasn't seen The Color of Money, I know it's old, but it's so good. 
It's it is so good. good. Yes. It's, it's, it's something you have to check out for sure. But I think first movie that I saw, or maybe I'm wrong, with Pocket, it was Maverick with Mel Gibson. Oh, that actually was a very good movie too. I mean, yeah. it was pretty corny that he thought he could will himself to get quad aces, I think it was at the end. But that movie yeah, itself so. was pretty good. Yes. Uh, that was, that was, that's been that, a few years though now. I think it was first uh, film I see someone playing poker, so. Yeah, Maybe. that would make sense because that was probably in the late 90s. Maybe early 2000s. I'm not sure when Maverick came out. No, I think it's more 90s. I think 90s? it's 90s okay. too. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah, and there actually was a Maverick uh, television show, I believe, that James Garner was in a long time ago. And that was Mel Gibson's dad in that movie. So who was the bad guy throughout the entire thing until the very end <laughs> when he realized that they were in cahoots. I don't know about you, but I've always liked movies that throw you a curveball at the end where you yes. think you have it figured out and then, oh, here's this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I do have five questions for you that we call rapid fire. So are you ready for rapid fire? Okay, there are no wrong answers, okay? <laughs> so, coffee or tea? Coffee. Coffee, black? Black. Black, okay. Are you currently binge watching a TV program right now? Yes, with my, okay. with, 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 with my daughter, yes. Okay, do you care to share what it is? Dexter. Dexter, yes. that's a good one. I watched that before. <laughs> Have you seen it before? Or is this yes, the first time? It's the first time for my daughter, and we uh, okay. watch it uh, now together. So that had been out for a really, really long time, and I never gave it the time of day. And one day I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch the first episode and see. Uh, that is one of the shows that I had a really, really hard time to take a break <laughs> with. Like, I had to get through it. I had to know what was going to happen. Do you have a favorite sports team? Yes. What is it? Part of football team. Uh, I figured it probably <laughs> would be, but I wasn't sure, so I had to ask. All-time favorite video game? Alex Kidd and Samurai something. I don't remember. Okay, I'm, I'm not, fair enough. I'm not playing uh, very much video games, uh, but... Uh, You're not I'm, a Fortnite girl? Mm, no. Nope, okay. I don't... I can't play this. <laughs> <laughs> this is I can play. So I'll play Fortnite. Not very, with, not very good with this controller. I'm stuff. with you. So I play Fortnite with Dragon, and you know Dragon. He's a mutual yes. friend of ours. Yes. Um, so I play with him quite often, and he will give me. He's way better than me, by the way. I'm, I'll throw that out there, Dragon. You're better than me. <laughs> but what I have to tell him is, listen, man, my fingers do not move as fast at 50 years old as they do when he is 30 some years old. It, and it, I don't know when that happened because I used to be able to be like move and react as fast as anybody else. But I'm just kind of like the guy that mops up what dragon leaves because I, I can't click the buttons as fast as he does anymore, okay. but it's still a great time for, uh, to hang out with friends. And, and really we always joke like, Oh, we didn't win any games tonight, but we spent a couple hours just getting to catch up and talk. You know, so yes, it's, it's of kind of fun. With no. my Am Among Us uh, on Fridays every week. So this play, I now I can play. I can say I can play, but I'm not very good at it when I'm imposter. Imposter. It's, it's not, I'm not a good imposter. So, <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what, what do I need to do <laughs> for kill someone. I try to kill, but someone saw me and... Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> I, I could not figure that game out. And come to find out, I, I, you're trying to figure out who who killed someone, right? Yes, I can't remember. Yes, yes, yes. But only one person did it. Is that correct? 
sometimes it's once some it, you can change for two and sometimes uh, the second one it's can change uh, okay all two yeah, I, transformation of the other player it's it's terrible <laughs> i tried it one time i didn't kill anybody and i got voted out i guess i don't know what it was but like my game ended like i wasn't able to play anymore and so i tried it again i never did figure it out and it looks so simple but i'm gonna guess there's a lot of strategy involved but it, it's fun when you're playing with friends it's um, nice to have fun i may i may try to get that. on i may try to get on that this friday night and, and play Bobo, with you guys Bobo playing with us uh, yes many times yeah yes. that is a gamer that is a guy that has played hours upon hours of video games yes yeah. even <laughs> as a young kid because he's my younger brother even as a young kid, he would out. He would put way more time into video games than I ever even thought about doing. All right, last rapid fire question: Do you have a favorite season, like winter, fall, spring, summer? Yes, winter, and I miss it so much because in Portugal we don't have winter at all. No, we have in one place, but uh, it's not like in my home. <laughs> so tell us again where our home was. Ukraine. Ukraine. Okay. So yeah, I'm from Ukraine. So what seasons are there in Portugal? Because here in Missouri in the United States, we have a true winter. We have a true spring. We have a true summer. Like it's hundred degrees out now, but in January it may be zero and be snowing. And then we have a true fall. But what seasons do you have there in Portugal? I think we can divide it for two. It's like summer and spring. Spring, yeah. Spring, because it's rainy and cold a little bit, but it's not. It's not minus. To, yeah. Uh, temperature here, so it's it's okay. And uh, in the summer, it's very hot, and you you don't see like nature to change with the seasons. It's almost the same. Okay. Or it's like half leads or it's don't have leads. <laughs> it's we, we don't have this a transition. You don't have very certain transition to uh, time like from summer to uh, autumn and autumn to winter. It's, mm -hmm. In Portugal, it's almost the same. <laughs> yeah, because like here in Missouri, and you know who knows where people that are watching this or where they're from. We'll have no leaves on the trees and everything is brown in wintertime. Then it starts to warm up and we get a bunch of rain. Everything greens up. Everything gets yes, leaves. Yes, yes. And then it, depending on how hot it gets in the summertime, things will die a little bit. But then <laughs> in the fall, all the trees' leaves turn different colors before they fall off. And it's beautiful. It's, it's you know, beautiful. I love I, it. Yes, I love this too. But it's... I can feel it like for more than 20 years and i feel very much uh hanger for winter <laughs> i need to ah. feel winter but i love this uh, i love when atoms come and leaves come to change this uh, their colors uh, it's very beautiful in my hometown it's like this gotcha no you uh so Holly is from more of a desert climate than we are. And yes. she came and visited and it was in December and it was unseasonably cold. <clears throat> and she said that it hurt her bones. It was so cold. Well, we're <laughs> used to it, right? Because it just gradually drops. It doesn't just, but she's at like 89 degrees on a plane, flies to Missouri, gets off and it's 15 degrees. And it was just like this climate shock. And it yeah. took her probably a good day or two to kind of get used to it, but I don't think she ever really got used to it. So I don't think she's going to be visiting us in the winter time anytime soon. So. <laughs> <laughs> probably but, chose uh, uh, winter, winter uh, uh, summer for the other time. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's what she said. You guys got to come out and see us, but don't come like June, July and August because it's just too hot. Like she, it gets so hot there that sometimes her internet doesn't work because everything overheats. Oh, it's like, perfect I think, for her. But in the summer, she come to you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I told her. Yeah. But it's uh, Missouri is a weird one. Like, if I didn't have family in Missouri, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't live in Missouri because you get the extreme of everything. Like, brutal cold, inches of snow to 110 degrees and humid. And I don't know why I live here, to be honest with you. 
I've heard though that Portugal is a very beautiful place. Yes. Yeah, I've heard that it, it is an op one of these days I got to get over there. I'm I'm sheltered in my travels. I've got to I've got to get out more. I guess is what I should say. So come when you want to come. Well, to I'm, look at that couch behind you. I look at that couch behind you. Someday I might be sleeping on that for a night or two. <laughs> it's okay. You're always welcome. <laughs> hey, vice versa, free room and board. If you ever decide you want to visit Missouri, you know, just let us know. But Thank I you. I really really enjoy talking with you. Um, it is nice. One of the things that this has allowed us to do is to meet people that there was no way I was ever going to get to meet them. And it, you know how you can just tell when someone's real and they're genuine. I've always felt that way about you. And you are a legend on the poker table. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> and someday we need to figure out how to go heads up. Yeah, We got to go heads up someday. Well, maybe we'll put an NFT on the line or something like that, or figure out how to do it for as a giveaway. But I want to go Josh versus Hannah. Heads up. The sound yeah, like playing. About it, yes. Okay, <laughs> and we'll get the wheels turning a little bit. Yeah. But I, I want to thank you for coming on. I want to thank you for being the first guest, and I thank hope you, you had so a good much time. For me to come. Yeah, absolutely, and we'll do it again for sure. Thank you very much, Josh. Thank and you. Enjoying very much to talking to you. I'm Kayla, please like and subscribe.